Well, hello everybody, and today we're gonna do a little bit of an improvised video. This is actually gonna be a bit of a recommendation, not a review or a overview or anything. It's gonna be a little bit of a recommendation. As you might know, I'm a budget photographer, even though I have ac uh, accumulated a bit of a fairly decent collection of uh, photographic equipment. Uh, but what I'm gonna show you today is these two little things by Sigma. Uh, as you might know by now, my camera of choice that I'm using, my poison of choice, is the Nikon D7200. The Nikon D7000 series in general is what what uh, I would opt for for, mu uh, for people who want to go into photography. And, uh, save money in the long run, so to speak. <clears throat> Why would I say that that is saving money? Well, this is just my opinion. So if you have anything, if you have any uh, op opinions of your own about this, uh, please post them in the comments below. That's how we keep a discussion going. Uh, this is just what I used. It's a little bit, uh, I got it by a fluke, for instance. It's what I could get for cheap on the internet, so. I'm gonna show you, these two are two Sigma lenses that I would really recommend to anybody who is, uh, maybe, what would I call these lenses? They're travel lenses in in basic term. These two are what you would use to take pictures with friends and family when uh, probably the pin sharp quality isn't uh, the number one uh, thing to think about. I mean, I have my some of my Nikkor lenses here, the Tokina 400mm manual focus, uh, it's a prime lens. This one really takes very tack sharp uh, pictures, I love it. And uh, the only thing it has is a little bit of chromatic aberration, you have some uh, purple on the edges of what you see. But these two, I mean, as you may or may not know, I'm a bit of a martial artist. I do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and I've recently taken up Bujinkan Ninjutsu. Uh, but anyway, <clears throat> I, when we have events at the, the local, you know, with the sports, I'm usually there with a the camera, both training, practicing, and taking pic snapping pictures. I might show you, I have some of an Instagram and I might uh, include them with this video. But anyway, We'll begin with this lens. Uh, <clears throat> when we, we had the ninjutsu training camp here uh, a couple of weeks ago, this is the lens that I usually used uh, to... No, it's... Actually, this was the only lens that I used to photo that event. And uh, what is this then? Well, it's a Sigma lens and it's an autofocus. So, this one doesn't have any, you know internal autofocusing and it doesn't have any vibration reduction of any kind and it's a very it's a short throw you know focus ring uh, it's an internal focusing so you can have you can probably get a uh, tulip uh, shroud for this but anyway it's a 28 to 105 millimeter lens uh, so it will become a little bit uh, you know a little bit uh, more uh, tele zoom on the D7200 uh, uh, or D7200 uh, because that's a crop sensor body. But anyway, I would say that this lens is great for you know indoors, uh, indoor events, you know friends and family or sport events. I would say this is quite the sh uh, fast autofocus, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's good for what it is. And the second one also is another Sigma. Uh, well, I'm gonna first tell you what this was. It was the Aspherical IF and uh, UC3. And it's uh, a 3.8 to 5.6 aperture, but depending on zoom, on, uh, of course. Well, this one was supposed to come with a... Uh, it was supposed to come with a lens hood, but uh, unfortunately, I bought this uh, on uh, eBay for a second hand, so unfortunately the hood was not included. Neither was the original front, front lens cap, so it's an aftermarket one. But uh, if anybody knows, if anybody out there has this uh, lens, tell me what type of a, a shroud should I get for this? What type of lens hood could I get? And also, we have this one then. 
This is the Sigma uh, 70 to 210. It's, this is actually a USC 2. So it's not an internal focus, it's an external, so it will twist and so on. And that actually came with a complete, you know, standard lens hood. But like the, like the uh, 28 to 105, this is also a autofocus uh, lens. So it doesn't have an internal focus motor. You need a camera like the D7200 because it, it needs the uh, Canon internal fo uh, camera body focus motor. Uh, actually, all of these lenses, uh, with the exception of the Tokina, all of them are, you know, autofocus lenses that needs uh, the screw motor in the camera body. But anyway, what this video was supposed to be about, and I'm actually using my little Samsung pad, smart pad here, so I can uh, take a look at uh, Instagram myself to, you know, have a look. <clears throat> this lens I actually used when I visited a local museum not long ago, or I would say I used both of these lenses. As you might know by now, I live in Sweden, and the tiny town of Gävle, <clears throat> Famous for the uh, straw Christmas goat that uh, probably is... A, there is probably an international odds gaming on uh, which date uh, in December it's going to be burnt up. Uh, but anyway, we are also famous for our local railroad museum. It was kind of a favorite of mine growing up. Uh, wanted to, to go there constantly. Well, the problem of shooting in the museum itself is that it's uh, quite dark. And it's white wall to wall with very often black painted steam engines inside it. So it's uh, a little bit tricky to get a good, uh, you know, good uh, lighting to photograph it. But I've had some of my photographies from this, uh, um, from a little excursion to the museum. I have it here on my, uh, my Instagram, which I'm gonna show with this video. And uh, I'm also gonna post some videos with it. And... These were the, both the lenses that I used with it, and of course, I did some editing in Lightroom as well. As you can see on most of these pictures, we had a little bit of... I was actually lucky, because from the local train station to the, this museum, this museum is not a place where you just... they've just uh, put uh, old trains in a building, no, not really. They're actually using them. So uh, a couple times a year, I think they have some events where they are using the steam trains. We have, they have a, a lot of different things and uh, they even have some uh, model railroads in the, base, in the museum basement. So I'll show you some pictures of, of those as well. But anyway, a lot of the muse mu museum rolling stock and so on are also on display outside in the museum yard. So, uh, I have some pictures of that from my Instagram, and I'll be showing them. And this was basically just a little bit of a video about uh, what I've been shooting with, and uh, a little bit of a real-world showing of me using the lenses. Uh, unfortunately, since I'm alone in this, uh, I don't have anybody shooting me shooting pictures. So, this is uh, what you, what uh, I can do in uh, today's uh, situation. But I hope you might enjoy this. If you're a railroad fan, I would really recommend this museum. It's one of the best collections, at least in this country. I don't know about yours. If you have any any information about it, if you have any interest in it, uh, drop a comment uh, below. It's just for fun and uh, like to have a discussion going. So thank you for now and take care. See you in the next video.